<laughs> what's going on YouTube thanks for tuning back into another video um, yes there's another block in front of the uh, CRX we're going fully sleep no I'm just kidding this is just another bear b20 block that I bought a couple months ago in preparation for this day now uh, you guys probably already guessed why we have another b20 block because if you guys know about the Honda game you know that the b20 blocks are notorious for cracking a sleeve so um, unfortunately let me show you. A couple days ago, I went to Walmart and purchased. I'm dropping stuff everywhere. I purchased this GoPro Hero 7 White Edition. Uh, just your standard uh, 1080p at 30 frames per second, nothing fancy. Just the regular stuff to do some, you know, pools inside of the car and get some nice footage of it. Little did I know, this also comes with a time lapse setting. And I time lapsed the pools. Within that video that was time lapse, and when I reviewed it, it's worthless. You can't even tell that I'm doing pools. You can barely tell that I'm driving. So I'm not going to include that footage. But in those videos, uh, I did a couple hits. Uh, one rolling, actually two or three rolling hits. Uh, one second gear wide open throttle pull, one third wide open throttle pull, all separate. And then I did a, a rolling first, second, third, fourth. And that was perfect. Drove it around for 15, 20 minutes. It's quarantine time, so I didn't really have much to do. Just wanted to do some nice footage for you guys. Unfortunately, I was on time-lapse mode, so I do apologize for that, not having it on video. The last clip that I wanted to make was launching the car. We went to a private road that we used for testing. Um, obviously not in traffic or anything. And uh, yeah, we tried launching the car and the uh, motor just, it, it gave. It uh, started smoking and the temperature went hot. Fortunately, I uh, didn't really have, I wasn't too far from home, but I wasn't close. And um, given the quarantine situation, I didn't want to call somebody to come and bring me this or help me pull me home just because I didn't want to risk anybody else leaving their house unnecessarily. I'm trying to stay socially distant and be smart or whatever. Uh, it was, the, the damage happened right there. So uh, we drove it home. Uh, obviously, it was you know as cautious as possible. There was some other stuff from the the drive shaft that I have to fix now because of what happened, but we'll get into that in another video. Um, I drove it home, went to home, going slow on on red the whole time with the temperature, and uh, I I knew it was one of two things: either the head gasket finally gave, which head gasket is right here. This is a Felpro Advanced Auto Parts head gasket, and I'm not sure if you guys can pick it up, but there is a little bit of copper on the edges of it. This gasket has been reused and copper sprayed. I want to say three, four times it's been torqued down. Five if you want to include the last time when we actually uh, retorqued the head for when we went boost. And uh, we should have replaced that a long time ago. Sorry, mosquitoes in here. And uh, we did it. And we just kind of kept on sending it, Papa. You know how it is. And um, yeah, we just kept on using that. I thought it was that. Unfortunately, it wasn't. And uh, let me show you guys what happened right now. All right, so this one is a B20Z, Z2 if I'm not mistaken. I'm not 100% sure on the codes of them. I know that they're different than the B20B. I think the compression from the factory on the stock pistons is different or something like that. Uh, still an 84 millimeter block. This is a B20B. And um, let me show you. I only found one crack and that is right there. You can see very clearly. It goes down. And uh, I wouldn't say that the DEF CON didn't work, but it didn't stop it from cracking. Although I think that this would have cracked a long time ago had the DEF CON not been there. Now, something else about the DEF CON, um, you can see right here. Let me show you without my finger. That way, my finger's not in the way, just with a little flathead screwdriver. You can see me. It's very malleable now. And some pieces are actually flaking off. You can see there's little, little pieces breaking off. And that, in turn, could damage the water pump in the future. Most of it is still solid, but there are some pieces that are starting to break up. If those get stuck in the water pump, it does even worse. It does more damage. Luckily, we didn't have uh, deterioration that far, but it's something that could happen. Now, something else I wanted to show you guys. I'm going to put my camera on the tripod real quick. I can do this without having to cut to a new clip. This motor is still nice and good. Watch this. I don't know if I should be doing this or not, but I can rotate it just by pulling the timing belt. The motor is nice and healthy. 
Bearings are nice and strong. There's not any problems in it. The wall to piston ratio is still nice and loose, how I made the motor. And uh, yeah, you know, this is, the motor ran perfectly. It didn't knock or anything on the way home. It was super hot, obviously, but the, the car had overheated like this once before, right after the burnout competition at Cletus and Cars. And uh, we let it cool down. And then after that, you know, hit nitrous on it again and, and never gave any issues. So I think the motor just has gone through so much abuse. Uh, before we installed the K-Tune shifter, this thing has been a beauty, by the way. If you have an all-wheel drive B-Series, this is by far the one that you want to get. Now, I've never had a K-Series uh, build to actually compare it to the K-Tune K K-Series shifters, but I'm sure they're just as magnificent. The, the parts are really good. Before I had that shifter, I had the OEM uh, CRV shifter, which is really weird. It has that big bend in it. I one to one the motor maybe three, four times in its life and uh, never pulled the bearings, nothing. It always ran perfect. The oil pressure was always really good after it. This motor has been through so much abuse. It's something I like about it. You can see a little scoring up and down, but you can still see the uh, crosshatch. Yeah, the crosshatch is still really nice and healthy on there. And I'm really surprised that the motor has gone through so much abuse and it just now basically broke. It's never a good time to receive bad news like this. Uh, the last thing that you want is for a sleeve to crack, a head gasket to blow, a rod to bend, whatever it may be. You never want damage to your motor like that. That being said, I think I couldn't have had this happen at a better time, considering that I have another block already. I knew that this was gonna happen sometime. It's a B20 block, it's notorious for that. We never knew how much power it made on uh, 24 pounds, but I, I had a lot less boost. You guys saw the dyno video, it made like 320 and then the clutch let loose and we were on like 24, 25 pounds after that. So it's definitely making like four something. Uh, the limiting factor after that was fuel. We didn't have a big enough injector, but um, it's making a lot of power. It's all wheel drive. I knew something was gonna happen. So I had that extra, the extra stock sleeve block just in case. And um, we finally reached the moment that it's actually gonna need to get used. The troubling thing about this, well, I don't know if I mentioned it. What I'm trying to say is that if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen now. And it's a good moment to actually have time to tear everything down. Like I mentioned in the last couple of videos, I'm out of a job. I got laid off because of the whole COVID-19 situation. But um, now I have a lot of sp uh, spare time that I can actually dedicate myself to work on these cars and do everything nice and soft, or not soft, but like nice and uh, patient and actually take my time with everything. Um, the trickiest thing will be now finding a machine shop because there's one in town here in Palm Coast, Florida, where I live, and I'm not sure if he's even gonna be open. It's an older gentleman. He, um, he's the only one that I know that actually does blocks. And I've used them before. He actually machined this block and machined the head when I actually got this together. Aside from that, uh, Daytona, the Daytona machine shop, I think it's called, that might be open. And if not, a buddy of mine works in Orlando. He actually works at a machine shop. So I know he's open for sure, worst case scenario. But uh, the troubling thing now is just gonna be getting that machine work done. Aside from that, if you guys aren't familiar with the build, this is a 95 millimeter Eagle crank, which means it's a stroker, along with B16 rods onto the Wysoko 84 and a half millimeter pistons. What does that mean for you guys watching right now? I can't just drop it into a block that gets machine bored out. I also need to notch the bottom of the sleeve so it can clear, clear the manly rods that it has since I had to run some Frankenstein B16 rods to make it work with those uh, Eagle crank and the throw of it or whatever you want to call it, the angle that it gives it is way different from if you had an, a regular 89 millimeter uh, B20 slash LS crank. Sorry, I'm getting a little technical if you guys don't uh, know much about these motors. The stroke is different on uh, the one that I have compared to the OEM one. Um, so I have to notch the bottom of the block. I don't think I ever ended up making a video about when I did the notching on this block. Um, although, let me tell you, on this one, once I take it apart and show you guys, it is aggressive and it is ugly. Um, I have the porting bits that I'll probably use to, to port the new one or to notch it. Um, but I'll probably try to make it as nice as possible. But on this one, it was just super aggressive and it looks ugly. Uh, but you guys will definitely see that this time around. Then aside from that, it uses LS slash B16 um, main and rod bearings, if I'm not mistaken, because I believe they're the same. I think GSR and Type R changes. Don't quote me on it, but um, I'll check the condition of the bearings. And if they're good, then we'll reuse them. And if they need to be changed, then by all means, we'll change them. But we're trying to keep the cost to the bare minimum. Like I said, I'm out of work and I'm just trying to, you know, get this back to how it has to go. Uh, I need to buy a head gasket, and um, aside from that, the valve cover gasket still looked in good condition. 
and after that just swap over rotating assembly uh, check the rear main seal to see if it's still good if it's not i can always order one next day shipping i'm trying to think i don't think i have one but i definitely have a front main seal the one for the oil pump if need be i can swap that over no problem uh, cam seals i'll just add a little rtv so that's not going to be an issue and uh, at this point it's just actually tearing it down pulling the motor and since it is the block itself i'm gonna have to pull the motor and trans to keep it nice and easy and while I do that, I might even uh, clean up the trans a little. Might paint it black. I might just clean it up to get some of the oil off of it. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I just wanted to put this video out for you guys. I know you guys are quarantined in most parts of the world as well. And uh, we're bored here. I'm sure you guys are bored too. And this not might not be super exciting content, but it's an update for you guys. I owe it to you guys to give you the truth and the honest truth. Um, I'm not going to hide that something happened. Uh, if this happens to you guys at home, don't feel like you built the motor wrong or you had a bad tune or anything, especially if it's a B20. B20 sleeves crack all the time. It's just something that happens. Uh, now, that being said, I'm staring at La Fea's bottom end. She is behind that little trash can, all wrapped up, and uh, really tempting me right now. I'm not gonna steal that, because that's going for La Fea. I know a lot of you guys will say in the comments, why don't I just put that motor in? Although La Fea isn't getting immediate attention in the sense of actually getting back up and running, I still have that motor assembled and ready to go for this. The head still hasn't been done, but the block is 100% done. It's got oil pump, uh, crank, pistons, rods, uh, the O-rings, everything's done for the block. But I'm not going to run that in this car just because it wouldn't be right. I mean, that's for the other car. I, I'm really tempted, but I'm not going to do it. Um, but yeah, that does wrap up the video pretty much for today. Uh, I think while this is a part, I might do some other things like clean up the, the head a little. I'm definitely going to take it to the machine shop and have it checked to see if it's warped or anything. Like I mentioned earlier, I drove it a long time with the, the car overheated. Mind you, I also did that when we did the burnout. And after that, it ran perfectly without any issues. So who knows? We'll definitely just have it checked for the, for the sake of it. And um, after that, we uh, just want to let you guys know that we're going to keep on putting out content for you guys. And uh, please keep on supporting like you are. It's been a pleasure making this video for you guys. I saw a lot of support on the last one that I made with a little collage that I did of the whole build for the all-wheel drive CRX. And I really do appreciate your guys' support with that. If you aren't subscribed already, make sure to hit the subscribe and notification bell. And we'll see you on the next one, guys. Peace.